Hey everybody, Jan Bernakovich here with All Points Design, that's allpointsdesign.ca, and Neil Bertrando of RT Permaculture. We're here talking about the Oregon State University course, specifically the Permaculture Design course with Oregon State University, and today we're talking about assignment eight, the composting resources. Now, this assignment is usually a really quick one, but it starts to turn the gears a little bit on what we can compost and what's available in our area. So it's a list, uh, it's easy just to list it out. It's a lot more descriptive if you start to show photos or areas that you might be able to pull those materials from. So we're gonna show you a couple examples here just to give you a sense of what this might look like. Uh, starting right off, we're gonna start with this one. Uh, again, great to see all the things we always wanna see. We wanna see the title, we wanna see the address, we wanna see the assignment name, we wanna see the person's name, we wanna see the date, and all of this is in the PDF. So this is not posted on Canvas, this is not posted in the descriptions, this is in your assignment uh, profile. By profile, I mean portfolio. Uh, in home compost resources, most people are gonna have the same ones, fruit and vegetable peelings, eggshells, spoiled, spoiled, spoiled. Oh, that's a new one. Salad ingredients, newspapers, junk mail, yellow pages, old cotton clothing, sheets, um, indoor plant clippings. So great to see uh, some, some photos starting to get some conversations here. Outside resources, grass clippings, beanstalks. Nice to see some uh, thinking out of the box, roof moss. Never seen that one before, that was good to see. Community compost from the area, taking a look at community kitchens, municipalities, different uh, commercial enterprises, again, commercial enterprises, uh, and private enterprises as well. So taking a look at newer uh, tree, uh, C and D trees producing sawdust for compost, cardboard from Tesco, and then other potential, a possible use of large holly tree in front of yard. So potentially taking down a tree and, and reusing it. So already starting to think, could we take some of the elements here and use them for composting? Um, the really good assignment, clear, straightforward, easy, one slide, uh, A++. plus plus. What do you think, Neil? A++? plus plus. Yeah, looks great to me. Um, so I, I was mentioning to Javin that I struggle with the other potential compost resources category. Uh, what I see this category as is basically a double check, right? Have you thought of everything? It just asks you the question again, what else is there? What else could there be? So, and that, that's a good design process. It's like, okay, we've gone through, we've brainstormed each one in a category, but is there something else? And then does it fit into one of these categories? Mm -hmm. So that, that's what I, I like to see there. Is just, it's just refreshing the mind, getting, try, try to keep thinking outside of the box so you don't get stuck tunnel vision and something. Um, <clears throat> One of the things that we're doing on this assignment is we're creating a set of lists. Now, these lists are kind of isolated into their categories and just general at this point. What I would encourage you to do to take this assignment to a more advanced level is start to organize the quantities and the frequencies at which these resources become available. Because what that will allow you to do is integrate them both into your zones map, like how frequently and how often are you going to be using these, where are they generated, that sort of stuff. If, if they're in home or on site, where are they located on the site? And what, what I would do in a design process taking this to the next level is I would look at how much of each I have, are they green or brown, am I gonna be mixing them or how am I gonna be using them on the site? And how will I move them through the site um, in an energy cycling or a next best use type of system? So that, that starts to apply some of these other permaculture principles and design um, methods to the compost resource assignment. Great pieces from Neil. Uh, something really to, to keep in mind is starting to piece these out in terms of the browns, in terms of the carbon and the greens. And now greens can be further split into green material and nitrogen material, living material and really the fire material. So if you have gotten deep into the soil section of the course, you'll already have the background to be able to delineate these. Uh, if you haven't, again, this is a very basic assignment. You don't have to go the extra mile, but I'll tell you this much. The further you go in each of these assignments, the more detail you take in them, the more of the advice you take from Neil and I and the other instructors, the better off you'll be. Come out of this course with as much knowledge and understanding as possible, and you'll be way better off. I was gonna show you a couple others, but truthfully, they're all the same. You're gonna see the same thing over and over. And as you see your, 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 your 
uh, classmates uh, assignments it's going to be list upon list some people are going to be funny some people are going to show some great examples but this is going to be the same thing over and over so really make sure you have comprehensive lists make sure it's in your assignment in your portfolio make sure you split out if you're interested into carbons your browns into into nitrogen your greens and into your non nitrogen greens just so we get a sense that you know what we know make sure you get a sense of what the volumes are that you have to work with and potentially the frequency are you taking a look at going to the coffee store once a week and if so it's half a pail a full pail a five gallon pail that starts to give you a sense of priority of the bill of quantities you'll be working with down the road as you start to build your site so i think we'll leave it there neil unless you had anything else to share um, I, I have one, one other thing just to think about from a compost resources perspective is how are you planning on, on using it? There's, there's a few different ways that I frequently use compost. I either do a static compost pile, a thermophilic turn compost pile, a worm compost, permaculture, or I will do just a, not a static pile, but static composting, um, which is composting in place, which I would call mulch, right? So those are, those are the very common ways. And then the final way I would think of using compost resources would be to feed it to an animal, um, which a vermicompost is an example of, but I'm thinking that of things like um, flies or chickens or some other omnivore pigs. So <clears throat> those sorts of things I think are really valuable when you start organizing your compost resources to think about which resources are gonna feed into which type of process that you're gonna be then turning that compost into a valuable resource to use on your site. Great points, great points. So if you wanted to add that into the assignment, talking about where these might live in terms of your composting modalities or methods, another great place to take this assignment. Thanks so much for listening and watching and being part of the course. And we look forward to talking with you at the next video, on the next video, in the next video, during the next video. There's been a lot of videos today. Take care. Thank you.